From Commander.com, welcome to the Tech Refresh Podcast, where we scour the internet to feature the digital news, gadgets, and stories to keep you up to date. Our promise, you give us about 30 minutes, and we'll make sure you're the in the know, go-to digital source for your friends and family. After an exhaustive nationwide search to find just the right digitally savvy show host, well, they gave up, and you got me. I'm Mike James, along with the Commando content queen, welcome, Ali Seligman. Hello, Mike. And, uh, of course, our news director is Ben Obi-Wan Bradley, back again. Hey, Mike. And we have a ton of stuff to get. This is going to be a great show. Allie's got, there's a problem with your account on Amazon. Allie's got that a little bit later on. We've got brand new or not true. Allie's got the products today. And Ben and I are guessing. Also, our our deep dive today is uh, photo organization. How do you organize your photos? What's the easiest way to do it? We're going to start with the news. And Google Play Store has pulled a popular Android app. Go ahead. Yeah, can you believe it? An Android app has just been removed from the Google Play Store because of malware that can hijack phones. That never have. I know. You know, it might sound like any other day of the week when they pull one app or, you know, a few hundred apps. But this one actually is pretty bad, and you might even have it on your phone. Uh, this one's called Barcode Scanner, which is a pretty generic name, but it's by a developer called LavaBird. It's been on the Google Play Store for years, and it has more than 10 million downloads. And, well, through... All these years, the app seemed legit and worked as a barcode scanner and a QR code reader. Uh, But something changed a couple of months ago. Uh, The anti-malware software company Malwarebytes started getting all kinds of reports from Android owners that ads were opening with their browsers just out of nowhere. And it wasn't because they'd installed any new apps. Anyway, Malwarebytes figured out what everyone had in common was this barcode scanner app. And apparently when the app was updated in early December, new code was added to push all kinds of advertising. And I don't just mean the the usual kind that you see in free versions of real apps. I mean like malicious code that was carefully hidden. Uh, Anyway, Malwarebytes informed Google and it's been pulled from the Play Store. Uh, But if you have it on your smartphone, you need to remove it as soon as you can. If you're not sure, open the Google Play Store app on your Android, tap the three-line menu, then tap on My Apps and Games, uh, look for Barcode Scanner, again, by a company called LavaBird. And if you see it, tap on it and click on Install. And so is this like a foreign uh, people that were had this, or is this a – or do you know? I don't know the uh, origin. It's just – it's one of those things that it's it's been there for so long, and there's never been any problems with it. It's always had a clean certificate. Uh, it's always been a, you know, a well-reviewed app, too. Like, it does what it says. It doesn't crash. It doesn't uh, do anything secret until the last two months, and now it's just – Completely turned. Yeah, it's in. funny. Usually, when this happens, it's because the app or the extension or whatever it is was sold to a different developer, and then they go in, add something a little sneaky. But no, same company. So I'll be pretty interested to hear what they have to say for it. Uh, also, we've got the mother of all data breaches this week. What? Ha- oh boy, yes, some security news for you. Three point two billion with a B email and password combos uh, were just leaked online. Before you freak out too much, uh, it isn't a brand new breach. So it's being called Comb, or the compilation of many breaches. And it's basically a big gathering of some of the biggest data breaches in recent years, all packaged up into one. Now, the hack might not be new, but it could uh, put you in some real danger, um, you know, right now. Because this is such a big database, there's a good chance that you uh, and your information are contained in it. So we've said this over and over and over again. But this is where reusing passwords can really get you into trouble. Uh, Netflix was included in this. There was a Netflix data breach. So think of it this way. You use your Gmail account and a password to log into Netflix. Okay, you can bet if someone gets that password, they're going to go to your Gmail, check if that same password is there. And if it is, they've just got the, you know, the keys to the whole castle. Think about everything in your inbox. Um, So, you know, this can work with just about any site. They'll go through and and check um, that login combination and lots of other things. So friendly reminder, use different passwords. Uh, So to check if you're part of this one, it's easy. Go to cybernews.com. Then you're going to click tools. And then there is a personal data leak check. If you didn't catch those steps, don't worry. We have it over on commando.com to a direct link. But uh, put your email address in. You can see if you're part of this. My data is in there. Bummer. I checked Ben's, and somehow he's not. So good job, Ben. Proud of you. Yeah, I'm going to complain <laughs> about that for a second because not that not that I want to be in the data breach, but come on. 
How I, I've had this email address that she checked since Gmail was in beta in 2004. And you're going to tell me it's not part of this, any breaches? That's, I mean, run the numbers here. But <laughs> anyway, one other, one other note to say, though, it's like if you think that, oh, uh, well, a hacker's not going to take these credentials and, you know, just go start trying my information on these other sites. Well, they don't have to, this whole credential stuffing thing. They've got, you know, bots and other ways that that'll just automatically try your credentials at like all kinds of other sites online. And, you know, we'll let these, these guys know anytime there's a hit and they successfully crack into another account. So, Well, not just your Gmail too. I mean, you're talking about if they can have access to your Gmail account, they've got your drives, they've got your Hangouts, they've got your calendar, everything. And then they are getting the 2FA codes for your bank and your other financial accounts. Oh, yeah, yeah they could change your <laughs> password. There you go. Very scary. All right, here's a cautionary here's a cautionary tale about AirPod safety that you probably never even considered, Ben. All right, let me set the stage. Places like Worcester, Massachusetts keep getting hammered with winter weather. Well, a few days ago, a guy named Bradford just spent a late night shoveling snow, and now he's just exhausted. So he goes in, turns on Netflix, and puts in his trusty AirPod so he doesn't wake his sleeping baby. Well, the next morning, he gets up and he goes back to shoveling. I said, now, you know, something's just not right. His chest feels a little off. He goes inside, he tries to drink some water, but it won't go down. So he's like, okay, I got to go get this checked out. Uh, well, doctors take an x-ray, and there it was, an AirPod stuck in his throat. He had apparently swallowed the AirPod while he slept the night before. I, can, I mean, can you imagine? Uh, no. As someone who couldn't take pills until I was uh, 22 years old, <laughs> I cannot fathom <laughs> swallowing an AirPod. It's almost like an L, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, you know, anyway, doctors performed an emergency uh, endoscopy. And they were able to remove it. Uh, and this guy's going to be just fine. Which What about the much. AirPod? <laughs> well, he, <laughs> the AirPod, uh, not so much. He told the NBC affiliate in Boston that uh, the audio still works, uh, but the microphone is a, is a little glitchy now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you think that's covered under the warranty? And it only makes burping sounds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> now, now, of course, you don't want to leave choking hazards around for the kids, but, I mean, you just don't often hear about freak accidents like that happening to, to grown-ups. So, you know, moral of the story, just be careful if you fall asleep listening to your AirPods and make sure someone you live with knows the, uh, the Heimlich, just in case. All right, coming up, uh, photo organization. Everybody's got millions of photos everywhere. Since we don't have film anymore, they're all on our phones and all the different gadgets. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, organizing your photos. Also, the scam of the week this week, what if you got an, a support call from Amazon telling you there's a problem with your account? We'll talk about that. And brand new or not true is just ahead from Tech Refresh and Commando.com. We're back on the Tech Refresh podcast from Commander.com, and later on, we're going to tell you about a Valentine gift nobody wants or will ever want. Before we get to brand new or not true, we have a, a quick tip we want to tell you about. Okay, so as we all know, computers don't last forever. You know, on average, people tend to replace them every three to five years. Uh, but what about your old laptop or your desktop computer? Do you do you sell it, recycle it, maybe just stick it in a closet? Thing is, you don't have to. Even if that trusty computer can't be your go-to machine anymore, you can actually still put it to use in other ways. Uh, for instance, you can turn it into a dedicated media and streaming center that you connect uh, to your TV via HDMI. You can also turn it into a file server where you store documents and other content. Uh, if you like playing old video games, you can convert an old computer into an emulator uh, that allows you to run classic, long-forgotten video games. All you need is special software like RetroArch. Now, at commando.com, you'll find more in-depth info about what I just talked about and other suggestions uh, to use those old computers, like repurposing them in other rooms like the kitchen and the garage. Uh, for more ideas, check out our report called Six Smart Things to Do with Your Old Computer. It's time now for America's newest national game show, Sensation, where you can play and guess, is it brand new or not true? Every week, literally thousands of new products, sites, apps, and services are announced in the technology world. Some are destined for greatness, others not so much. Oftentimes, the products sound so crazy, outlandish, and just ridiculous, you sit back and think, what were they thinking? 
When playing Brand New or Not True, we'll present you, the home listener, with three products, sites, or ideas. It's up to you to find out which two of the three are real and one, of course, then is fake. And we're going to start. Allie's got the products this week. Product number one. Yes. So normally I do go physical product. This week I've got apps. I've got three different apps for you. And of course, they're all real. So the first one, we're going to start with your smile. There are a ton of super popular apps out there to help you digitally whiten your teeth. But what if you're going for a a brighter smile actually in real life? Most at-home teeth whitening products, the change is really gradual and it can be hard over time to tell if the product is effective. That's why you need Beam. The app prompts you to take photos at whatever pace you want. They recommend weekly so you can see change over time. And it creates collages and side-by-side comparisons so you can see your teeth get whiter over time. One, this helps you make sure that the product you're using is working and it's good to actually see your progress and, you know, make sure that you're sticking with it. You can set up reminders to whiten your teeth every night or as often as you like to. You can customize it all. And there are some handy bonus features like a toothbrush timer and there are dental care tips in there from the American Dental Association. It's free to download on iOS and Android, and you can pay 99 cents to cut out the ads. Okay. Your smile app, Beam. Go ahead. Product number two. All right. This one is for all the data lovers. We have all these different health and well-being metrics stored in our phones, and it can be kind of overwhelming to have to look through all of them and even understand what they mean. Instant solves that with its all-in-one dashboard. It tracks your screen time, how many times you unlock your phone, your app usage, your workouts, your steps, and other fitness metrics, the time you spend at certain places like home and work. It uses geofences for that and how uh, the quality of your sleep. You then get weekly reports to help you understand your life and your health a little bit better. All of Instance data is private and it remains just inside your phone. You can get insights from the app's AI coach. You can set up goals and it tracks it all in one spot. The app is free to download, again, Android and iOS, but if you want to unlock all the reporting features and set up custom goals, you have to pay five bucks a month. Okay, that seems reasonable. That's the instant and product number three. All right, last up, let's go a little deeper. So the more often your brain gets positive messages, the better it is at keeping that information. That's the thought behind Hypnopedia. Hypnopedia tracks patterns in your sleep cycle to deliver affirmations when your brain is the most receptive. It syncs with your Apple Watch, and it works during the beginning, middle, and end of your sleep cycle. It does three things. First, it plays gentle sleep sounds to help you go to bed. Uh, you can create playlists and save them for later. Then, while you're asleep, it sends you one of 15 pre-recorded affirmations around health, happiness, mindfulness, success, whatever you choose. These play at peak times during your sleep when your brain is the most receptive. And then it wakes you up for the day with a smart alarm. So it keeps track of your sleep and makes sure to wake you up at a good time in your sleep cycle so you're not groggy all day long. You can use this with iPhone 6 and later in any of the Apple Watches. The free version includes all those features uh, or you can pay $2.99 a month to access an extended library of sleep sounds and even more reporting. And probably swallow or a, a, a pair of earbuds uh, on, while you're using it, right? Hopefully you get an alert, right? It should. Yeah, right. It, it, it should. Uh, the <laughs> Hypnopedia. And how much was that? That one is free to download and then $2.99 for the advanced features. $2.99. Just one time $2.99, not $2.99 a month. It, it is per month. Oh, it is two ninety nine per month. Okay. Well, they all seem, again, pretty reasonable. So good job, Allie, right out of the right out of the bat. Uh, the Your Smile app, taking pictures once a day. That's the product number one. Seems real to me because it's just a camera and, um, you know, just a reminder of how long you want to brush your teeth or whatever you're doing. Uh, The Instant, Track Fitness and Sleep and Goals, and that one was, I believe, only five bucks. Um, It's just kind of, it's kind of a fitness tracker, as I understand it. Yeah, it's five bucks a month. It's kind of all your metrics in one place. So kind of a dashboard for all of, all the stuff your phone tracks. Yeah, there's a million of those out there. And so it would seem real to me. Um, and then also the, uh, yeah, the earbuds, the hip, Hypnopedia. I think there's people out there that would buy that to kind of subliminally, I don't know, get better or be in a better mood or whatever it is, meditation almost, uh, subliminal med- meditation while you sleep. 
I would believe that, but I'm not going to believe this one. So I'm going to say that's the false product. Ben, go ahead. I'm kind of with you on the first one. It sounds at least in the realm of reality. So I'll think that one is real. Now, as far as the third one, the hypnopedia, that, that sounds, um, you know, so ridiculous that it's probably a curveball and it's going to be real. So I'm going to say that one's real. And I'm going to say the, uh, the second instant. It's, it sounds pretty creepy, pretty invasive that it, it keeps all the data on your phone. But I mean, it tracks how often you open your phone and how much you know, screen time and where you are. So I'm going to, I don't think people would really like that uh, personally. And so I'm going to say that one okay. is fake. Allie? All right, Mike. Hypnopedia, you think it's fake, subliminal messages, all that. This is a real app. <laughs> and it's it's got quite a bit of reviews, lots of people using it. So who knows if it actually works, but it exists. Right. All right, Ben. I agree with you. Instant sounds a little creepy, right? It tracks all that stuff, and why would you want that? But turns out people do. Instant <laughs> is also real. Oh. Of course it exists. All right. <laughs> Which leads us to the fake app, Beam, the smile app. There are lots of dental apps out there, but not this one. (laughs) I made this one up because you know what? I think it sounds pretty handy. It is hard to see those little changes over time. So I think I've got my next idea. There you go. Good job, Allie. You fooled us both again. I think you did that two weeks ago, too. Is that right? I believe I did. doesn't seem (laughs) – just put another check mark on there. Okay. I don't hold grudges, but revenge next week. (laughs) All right. That's it for this week's edition of Brand New or Not True. And thanks to Ben and Ale. Up next, we're going to take a deep dive into photo organizations. If you've got photos everywhere, on the computer, on the phone, on the tablet, wherever they are, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how to get those under control. Later on, the scam of the week about Amazon support calling you. What could it be? Uh, and then a little bit later on, uh, a Valentine's gift nobody wants. It's Tech Refresh from Commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh from Commando.com. Every week, we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech so you're in the know. And the source of tech information for your friends and family. Every week about this time, we take an in-depth look into issues that affect the technology lifestyle. And this week, we're going to look at photo organization. Who doesn't have photos everywhere? Yeah, so it's it's complicated these days. You know, I'm old enough that all the photos I took as a kid and as a teenager are still on film. Uh, Around the time my oldest son was born in 02, we had a digital camera. And when my other son was born a few years later... Cameras on phones were actually starting to take decent pictures. And now we, here we are all these years later. I have boxes of photo albums, uh, photos taken with digital cameras stored on external hard drives. The countless photos and videos I've taken with phones over the past decade plus uh, saved on the cloud, which covering different eras, it could be iCloud, Google Photos, Amazon Photos. And, you know, I'm at the point where I'm ready to to really start getting things organized and in one place. But it's it's going to take uh, – it's going to be an undertaking. So what about you guys? What's what's your situation with all your photos? A lot of mine are on Google Photos. I've been using that – oh, I now my history goes back for eight years. So it does that handy little feature where it will tell you like – this time last year, which I think those are so fun to look at. And it's it's a nice way to kind of relive your photos. But so I have eight years of photos in there. I know that I have, you know, lots in my iCloud from, you know, many years of iPhones. Um, they're a little spread out. Recently, we found uh, my husband found an old um, hard drive with all our wedding pictures on it, which then we put into the Google Photos. So, yeah, I'm a Google Photos person um, for the most part. I'm also Google Photos and then also Google Drive. I back up a lot of my business photos, the real estate photos I put on Google Drive. But, uh, you know, like per unit, there's like four or five photos that when we market the units um, we have to use. So they're uh, available from anywhere. And, yeah, Google Google Photos is great. I, I do. I get those notifications of what you were doing on this day in 2015 or whatever it is. It's fun to go back and uh, take a look. For the past year, so those have been pretty depressing because it's like, oh, look, you you had a hockey game. You had to dinner. You're doing this. And it's just like, oh, come on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got I got one yesterday. It's like one year ago today. You're at a Phoenix Suns game. Oh, uh, you know. Oh, just think about a year from now when you get one. Well, this is you on the couch. This is you in the kitchen. Hey, this look, is you the at backyard the, at, you know, at your yeah. desk. I kind of. It's funny. I kind of think about taking photos that way now. I mean, you know, when it was film, I think it was more let's take pictures for occasions or to kind of commemorate things. But now I actually think about, hey, I don't want to forget this um, with my phone, which you know I never did before. But now it's like, yeah, I want to remember this in, you know. My next year's Google Photos or whatever it is. So I think that's a fun way just to, that reminds me to take more pictures. Yeah, it's, you know, we we're talking about those memory alerts. I mean, Amazon Photos, we've, we used that for a very long time for current, so I'll get, you know, look back on your memories and it'll have this day on X number of years. And some of them, it's like back to 2007 and, you know, or what, whatever, when, you know, my kids were tiny or whatever. And it's just like, oh man, how much time has passed? But at the same time, you had all these photos being uploaded in different ways from maybe the phones or from these, you know, your computer. And so you've got duplicates. And that's the other thing that's, it's not just consolidating, figuring out how to consolidate. It's like, you may have duplicate photos all over the place or, or, or you know, it's, we were talking earlier, it's like, you know, you see something funny, you're scrolling through, you know, Instagram or Facebook and there's a funny meme or something. Oh, I'm going to download that. And you, and you come across it like two years later, like, why did I download that? Now it's just taking up room. It's just, <laughs> why do yeah. I have a screenshot of that? Yeah. Yeah. I have so many just random screenshots and just junk in mind that are, that's the stuff that I need to clear out for sure. The other thing I really like about all the cloud storage options is how easy it is to share, um, especially across devices. You know, if you're sharing somebody, if, if you've got an Android and you're sharing with an iPhone, it just condenses your photos in this really awful way. But um, this year for Christmas, I gave my parents a digital photo frame. And so I just created a folder in Google Photos and told my brother, put in pictures of you and your wife and the kids. And that was such an easy way for us to share them. And, you know, I'm gonna, I think I might make them do that more. Hey, send me some pictures. Just I want to get into the habit of printing more pictures, too, because they do get lost in your phone, right? I love printing pictures. Yeah, because you, you may take like eight pictures, like you're trying to get a good candid selfie with the family or something. You'll take like eight versions, but, and the one you like is just lost in that mix. So yeah, I love actually going in and, and printing <laughs> them and you know, still, you know, hanging it on a wall or something. Hey, hey Ben, yeah. is Amazon photos part of Amazon prime or yes. do you have to pay extra for that? No, that's, that's part of prime. How many gigs do you get? Or do you know? I'm pretty sure it's unlimited except videos. It's not unlimited videos. Um, uh, but it is unlimited photos. And that's the thing about Google photos in June. I think it's June 1st, unlimited photo storage goes away in Google Photos, and it'll it'll count towards whatever uh, tier you have. Oh, so wow. if you only have the free tier, right. it's like the 15 gigs, so otherwise you'll have to be paying for a, a larger bank of storage. Yeah, that's a good tip, Mike. I think that's a um, – a lot of people don't realize all the stuff you get if you have a Prime membership, and that's a big one. You get free photo storage, so if you're – if your Google Photos is full, you can put some of those big files. Is it about the same to um, share them in Amazon? It's not as easy. Uh, you can – at least I, I just haven't dived you know, too much into it. But, yeah, you can share links pretty easily to individual photos or you can download them uh, like into your current – like, oh, that's a cute picture from 10 years ago. And you can download it into your your phone's current camera roll or or drop it into a text message to send to someone. Um, so it's pretty easy in that regard. But I haven't tried any kind of like mass. Okay, I'm going to try to create this one folder and share that. So. All right. It's the Tech Refresh podcast. And one of the things we promise every week is to keep you posted on what's going on with the digital lifestyle. That includes keeping you from getting scammed. So every week we talk about a new scam you need to watch out for. This week, Amazon support calls. Allie. Yeah, we worry about Amazon scams from time to time. And they're usually emails. This one, though, is a phone call. And yeah, it's usually pretty easy to spot a scam call. But this one has a few things that make it tricky. Scammers are spoofing the real Amazon phone number. So you might get a call that actually says on your phone is from Amazon, but it's not. It's a recorded message to tell you there's a problem with your account. Sometimes it's that there's been a fraudulent purchase or your package is lost, your order couldn't be fulfilled. Whatever it is, you go through, they give you the details, and then the message instructs you to put in your credit card details or speak to someone so that they can get your login. Uh, sometimes the scammers will even insist on trying to 
quote, help you with your problem and they'll want to remote into your computer. All right. All of this is bogus. Step one, warning one, never let someone remote into your computer who called you. That is always a mistake. It's always going to lead you at the very least to a lot of frustration. At the worst, you'll lose a lot of money. Um, It's also tricky because Amazon does sometimes call customers, but they won't call you and ask you for personal information or for your payment information. Um, They'll never ask you to make a payment outside of the website. So if you get this call, hang up. Go to your Amazon account, and if there's an actual problem, it'll be there too. You'll get a you'll get a notification about it. Has either uh, either of you had any experience with Amazon customer service? I always do the web based version. I always do the chat. I've never. I don't know that I've ever called. Yeah, I don't think so either. I've done. You know, I've emailed. I mean, if there's been an issue with a third party seller and they're not responding, but even that's been a while. Have you? Yeah, I did. I, I called them. As a matter of fact, it was last year during um, when as COVID was kind of starting, it was starting. It was uh, about this time of year and it was over in China and I had uh, ordered a watch and um, apparently some somewhere around this time of the year, they have a holiday in China. So they take like it's like like our Christmas. So they take a week or two weeks off. So I wasn't too concerned until after like two weeks, three weeks, I hadn't heard back from them. And so I did call customer service and they kind of got involved and sent letters. Well, then come to find out they were all staying home because of COVID in oh my China. Gosh. Uh, and that's why I didn't hear anything for like six or eight weeks. And I don't remember if I ever did. So you're not wearing that watch right now? No, I'm not. And then <laughs> it, it's still on my uh, kitchen countertop. Maybe someday. It was, it was, about, a, it was about a replacement charger. As a matter of fact, so uh, we'll see if that ever happens. But anyway, uh, customer service for Amazon, if you do call them, is actually very, very good. Very responsive. They do answer the phone. There's a live person there. They speak great English. And um, so there you go. All right. It's the Tech Refresh podcast. Up next, we're going to hear from, well, we're going to hear about a Valentine's Day gift that no one wants. Stay right there. Thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast, heard exclusively on the Tech You Should Know podcast from Commander.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get these podcasts delivered automatically every Friday with the Tech You Should Know podcast. And that also gets you the special podcast this week where we talk about what does your car know about you. So our cars are tracking us, especially smart cars, and uh, we're talking about how they track us and what you need to look out for. Uh, That's again on the Tech You Should Know podcast. And right now we have a special Valentine's gift that mm, maybe we should not get. (laughs) Okay, let's let's start with this. Are either of you now or have you ever been Valentine's Day people? I'll go first. I am. I'm not. I don't care about Valentine's Day. It's been a while. I mean, uh, my wife and I have been married for coming up on 19 years. So it, it has been quite a few years since the Valentine's Day gift giving has been a thing. She does every year get me one of those uh, uh, big Reese's peanut butter hearts for Valentine's Day. Now, Ooh. I will tell you, this is PSA. I learned this many years ago. Don't eat it all in one sitting. <laughs> Just, just don't. <laughs> no, for me, I, I, you know, I love Valentine's Day. Yeah, special dinner, special gift. Yeah. Aw. Well, here is something to add to your not to do list. Although I don't think you two are in danger of this one. So, a woman named Haley, she posted on TikTok how she wanted to make Valentine's Day really special for her boyfriend. So she decided to give his Xbox a makeover. She filmed herself painting his Xbox. Uh, she painted it electric blue with fluffy pink clouds and yellow <laughs> stars. She captioned her video saying that she saw somebody else paint a PS5 and she thought it was really cute. So she wanted to do it for her boyfriend. You can imagine the response. This video has been seen 4.8 million times and mostly people making fun of her and saying, no, he's going to hate this. Why would you do this to, <laughs> to his Xbox? So the video went viral. Almost 5 million views. And so she thought, well, dang, I have to just show him this now. I can't wait till Valentine's Day. What if he sees it? So she made a follow-up video for the reveal. She comes walking to the room, clutching this newly painted 
console and her boyfriend sitting there waiting to open his present. He was speechless. After a few seconds, she said, do you like it? And he said, uh, it, it's a cute design. <laughs> and then she asked if he was mad. And he said, I don't know, which we all know is code for yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> 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 uh, that video also, um, like 16,000 comments. Poor Haley. She really messed up this Valentine's Day. <laughs> I, you know, hard in the right place, but yeah. if you're going to Van Gogh someone's expensive, <laughs> whatever it is, a computer, a, a gaming console, I mean, <laughs> at, at the very least, make sure, you know, try to get a little intel first that they l- they're, they like the idea or that they like the, the design that you're thinking about. She should go with the Reese's Heart next year. That seems to be a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not viral <laughs> video type, but sure. If you'd like to comment about the podcast, good, bad, or mostly good, send us an email to podcast at commando.com. That's podcast, plural, at commando.com. On behalf of Ben and Ali, I'm Mike. We'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news, articles, anytime, go to commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. 